Hello, today I'm going to take a look at the MSI Z790 Project Zero motherboard. And if aesthetics are important to you, this may well be the motherboard for you. You can see, looking at the front of the motherboard, it looks really clean. And that is because all the connectors that you're going to plug cables into are actually on the back of the motherboard. So in terms of pricing, I have found the motherboard on sale for as little as 279 US dollars. And for a Z790 motherboard with brand new technology with back connectors on it, that to me seems like a pretty good deal. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the motherboard. So seeing as most of our connectors are on the back of the motherboard, that's where I'm going to make a start. And we'll work along the bottom of the motherboard from right to left. So first of all, we've got a HD audio header and next to that we've got two RGB connectors. The first is a 12 volt 4 pin RGB connector. And next to that, we've got a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector. We've then got two system fan headers, followed by a USB 4 expansion card connector. And just above this, we've got our clear CMOS jumper. We've then got a forward-facing USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, followed by two USB 2.0 headers. Next to that, we've got two SATA connectors. And then at the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard, we've got our front panel connectors. Just above our last few connectors, we've got another row, which includes a system fan header, and we've also got chassis intrusion, TPM, and speaker headers. Working up the left-hand side of the motherboard, we've got another four SATA connectors, giving us a total of six SATA connectors on the motherboard. We've then got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel Type-C connector, which will support speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. Next to that, we've got another forward-facing USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, and then just above that, we've got our 24-pin power connector. Above this, we've got another two system fan headers, followed by the motherboard's second 12 volt 4 pin RGB connector. Working along the top of the motherboard, we've got our sixth and final system fan header, followed by our pump and CPU fan headers. We've then got our motherboard's second 3 pin 5 volt ARGB header, and then at the top right of the motherboard, we've got two 8 pin EPS power connectors to provide additional power to your CPU. You'll notice on the back of the motherboard we have some areas marked as case standoff keep out zone. And to avoid damaging your motherboard, it is important to remove any unused standoffs that would be in this area. Our motherboard features a 14 plus 1 plus 1 Duet Rail Power System, and you can see we've got really beefy aluminium heat sinks over the VRM. In the middle of the motherboard, we've got our LGA 1700 socket and standard mounting holes, and the motherboard is compatible with Intel's 12th, 13th, and 14th generation CPUs. We've got four RAM slots and the motherboard will accommodate up to a maximum of 192GB of DDR5 at up to 7200 plus mega transfers per second overclocked. If you need to troubleshoot your system, you'll be pleased to see we've got some debug LEDs over the top right hand side of the motherboard. The motherboard has 3 by 16 size PCIe slots and it's good to see that the top one is reinforced. This is a Gen 5 slot and it will run in by 16 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. The middle by 16 size slot is a Gen 4 slot and it will run in by 4 mode, while the bottom slot is a PCIe 3.0 slot and it will run in by 1 mode. Just between our first 2 by 16 size PCIe slots, we've got a PCIe 3.0 by 1 slot. The PCIe lanes from the bottom 3 slots all come from the chipset. Our motherboard has 4 M.2 slots, so I'll go ahead and remove the heatsink to give you a closer look at things. So all 4 of the M.2 slots are Gen 4x4 slots, although the PCIe lanes for the top slot come from the CPU, whereas the bottom 3 slots they come via the chipset. And the bottom 2 slots are also compatible with SATA drives. Installing your drives in the slots should be fairly straightforward with MSI's Easy M.2 clips. Taking a look at our rear I.O. and working from top to bottom, first of all we've got our BIOS flashback button. Beneath that we've got two USB 2.0 ports and the one with the black rectangle around the outside is the one you're going to plug your USB stick into if you want to flash your BIOS. Next to that we've got a PS2 keyboard and mouse combo port. And beneath that we've got a DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1 ports. We've then got another four USB Type-A ports, two of them are USB 2.0 ports and two of them are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. We've then got a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C port, which will support speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second. Next to this, we've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. Beneath this, we've got the antenna connectors for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. And at the bottom of the motherboard, we've got our audio connectors, and the motherboard does support 7.1 channel HD audio. So I do think this is an absolutely gorgeous motherboard, and because all your cables are going to be plugged into the back of it, they're not going to ruin the look of the build. You're also going to have a pretty powerful build, because this motherboard seems to have all the features you're going to want for a high-end build. In terms of the case, you are going to have to pick yourself potentially up a new case, because you're only able to use this motherboard in cases that are compatible with back connector motherboards. But more and more cases nowadays are including this 
uh, standard. So I am planning on doing a build with this motherboard fairly shortly in one of those compatible cases, and it's the Thermaltake Cirrus 330 TGA RGB. So if you have enjoyed this overview, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.